Good morning. I'm Asan Giordano, and this is your DMV Daily Dose for Monday, March 9th, 2020. It's currently clear in 39 degrees in Baltimore. Expect partly cloudy skies starting in the afternoon. Today's high will be 69 degrees, and the low will be 39. In the final home game of his career, Anthony Cowan Jr. had 20 points and 8 assists as number 9 Maryland defeated number 25 Michigan 83-70 on Sunday. With the win, Turgeon, Cowan, and the Maryland men's Terps clinched a share of the Big Ten regular season title, the program's first since joining the conference in 2014. But on the other side of the ball, the Big Ten Freshman of the Year, Ashley Owusu, scored 17 points and had 11 assists, leading the number six Maryland women's basketball Terps to its fourth Big Ten Conference title in six years with an 82-65 victory over Ohio State. A 13-year-old boy was fatally shot and several others, four children and a 19-year-old man, were injured during a shooting at a Rosedale Shopping Center, Baltimore County Police said on Sunday. The Baltimore County Police Chief Melissa Hyatt said 13-year-old Ricky Forehand was pronounced dead at the scene as police found him and five other shooting victims just after midnight in the parking lot of the shopping center in the 6200 block of Kimwood Avenue. In addition to Ricky, Hyatt said that two 12-year-old boys, a 14-year-old boy, a 14-year-old girl, and a 19-year-old man were injured in the shooting. All are expected to survive their injury, and one has been released from the hospital, the Baltimore Sun is reporting. Now, the House of Delegates erupted in cheers late Friday as a Democratic majority passed a sweeping education reform bill meant to overhaul Maryland's public schools over the next decade, Maryland Matters is reporting. The blueprint for Maryland's future bill, a $3.8 billion reform plan, aims to expand pre-K programs and career education for high schoolers, increase pay and career opportunities for teachers, and boost state funding for schools with high concentrations of poverty. Also included in a bill is a proposed new education funding formula, which would guide the increased state and local education spending and direct more resources to low-income students, those in special education programs, and those learning English. Democrats cast the vote as a historic moment for racial and economic equity. But Republican members of the chamber said that they opposed the bill largely because of its cost, which have no dedicated funding source as of yet. Quote, this is a massive spending bill that is about to be foisted upon the taxpayers of Maryland, said Delegate Haven Shoemaker, a Republican from Carroll County. I'm, the, I'm of the opinion that throwing money at the problem isn't necessarily going to fix said problem. Well, Democratic Delegate Alonzo Washington, a Democrat from Prince George's County, said that the Kerwin Commission, we're not throwing money at the problem. We're ensuring that we provide initiatives that work for our lowest performing schools and our students. This is our students we're talking about. These are our babies back in our schools, back at home. Well, Republicans tried during hours of debate on Friday to sway a vote to the NAIC column or to influence the bill by introducing 14 amendments. All failed along mostly party lines. At the end of the night, shortly before 10 p.m., the bill was passed by a 96 to 41 vote. All Democrats voted for the legislation and all Republicans voted against it. After Friday night's vote, the fight over education funding was far from over. The House Ways and Means Committee voted Friday evening to advance a revenue package, unpopular with Republicans again, that would implement combined corporate reporting in the state increase the state's tobacco tax, and apply it to vaping products, tax certain digital goods similar to tangible goods, and apply a sales tax on some luxury services. Taken together with other bills under consideration, the bills would generate upwards of $700 million in new state revenue by 2025, covering a substantial portion of the increased state funding for public education in 2025, expected to be about $1.3 billion. The House chamber is expected to move quickly on the revenue measures as lawmakers stare down a deadline to present bills to the Republican governor, Larry Hogan, with enough time to force a same-session veto deliberation. 
The reform bill passed with 11 votes more than the three-fifth majority needed to override a veto. Senate committees are set to begin reviewing the House bill on Monday. Marilyn Mattis is also reporting that the House of Delegates voted unanimously Friday on a bill that would place a moratorium on any wireless wide area network or cellular networks to transmit data from polling places. The bill responds to a controversial requirement by the Maryland State Board of Elections that the state's six, la state's six largest jurisdictions use a new cellular wireless technology in, uh, to transmit voter information to the state headquarters on 2020 during our election days. The policy has since been curtailed following security concerns and complaints by local Board of Elections, which had to pay for routers they considered to be an unfunded mandate. Now, election officials who initially said that the routers were needed to transmit same-day voter registration changes in time for a post-election absentee canvas later came back and said that the routers also allowed for real-time monitoring of potential problems on precincts. While Delegate Nick Mosby didn't agree with that turn of events, so he put it in his bill. But on Thursday, Governor Larry Hogan introduced a supplemental budget that shifts the $1.9 million bill for the routers from local government and allows the expenses to be covered by the federal grant. And on Friday, the state Senate advanced an ambitious plan to pump $375 million into improvements at Pimlico's race course and Laurel Park. There was no discussion and no debate, and the vote was 44 to 1, with only one senator, Anne Arundel County Senator Brian Seminor, a Republican, dissenting. Senate Bill 987 would authorize the Maryland Stadium Authority to float $180 million in bonds to rebuild Pibico, home of the Preakness Stakes, and $155 million to rebuild Laurel, the state's busiest and most lucrative track. If the measure is adopted into law, the Preakness, the second leg of racing's triple crown, would remain in Baltimore in perpetuity. The new Pimlico will feature athletic facilities and community space that will be available to the surrounding community 11 months a year. The measure also provides $2.4 million a year for the Park Heights Renaissance, a neighborhood organization in northwest Baltimore, transfers control of the Bowie Training Center to the city of Bowie for eventual use as a nature preserve and ball fields for Bowie State University, and creates a health, safety, and welfare advisory committee. Now, the Baltimore County House delegation on Friday voted down a measure that would have allowed for Sunday package liquor sales in the county. 14 delegates voted in favor of a motion to kill the bill, and just four voted against it. The bill's sponsor, House Minority Whip Kathleen Schlega, a Republican, and three other Republicans, delegates Lauren Arrigan, Robin Grammer Jr., and Rick Metzger. The bill had been the subject of a lengthy and emotional hearing in the Baltimore County delegation just a week prior. Some local liquor store owners and representatives of Beltway Fine Wine and Spirits, which is affiliated with the Total Wine and More National Liquor Chain, testified in favor of the measure, which would have lifted the county's long-standing tradition of banding Sunday packaged liquor sales. But other liquor store owners and several restaurants testified against it. Baltimore County Exec Johnny Oleski Jr., a Democrat, also weighed in in favor of the measure. Shalega says she is hoping to work out a compromise that would be agreeable to both sides. Well, I'm your man, Mr. Politics, and this has been your DMV Daily Dose for Monday, March 9th, 2020. I want to thank everybody for their warm birthday wishes over the weekend on on Friday on my birthday. It was an enjoyable vacation, to say the least. For more information on the articles that I've mentioned, just make sure you go over to that website at www.dmvdaily.news.